G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well, things have cooled off a little bit if we're looking over the 24 hour period anyway. We can see that there's a lot of sort of red going on here. Now nothing major, but it is something that makes me think, is a correction going to come before we get into, you know, kind of the true alt season, you know, before Ethereum kind of breaks its old all time highs, uh, you know, when pumps you know, to, I don't know, whatever it might go to, you know, uh, 1,800, 2,500, who knows. Now, there's a reason that I'm thinking that. So, number one is we just need to look at the Bitcoin chart. Bitcoin has been coiling here for a while, coiling and coiling, but it is getting lower, but the lows are getting higher as well. So, look, for me, I really think it's going to happen in the next couple of days. I sort of... You know, before the weekend comes, it's uh, Wednesday here in Australia. So I think before the weekend comes, we're going to know one way or the other. And I am somewhat suspicious that we might break to the downside. There's been so much, you know, kind of euphoria, really. We're not at the true euphoric stage, uh, especially on the Nuples chart and that, that Ivan talks about. But we have been pretty euphoric and things have been pretty crazy. So it just seems to me that this might be the time that we get a bit of a correction. Now, please don't get that wrong and have that and, you know, get in your head that that's me telling you that that's what's going to happen. I'm just saying I wouldn't be suspicious. You know, we've got to zoom out a little bit and just look where we've come. This has been crazy. Yes, you know, we I think this ended up being nearly a 30% correction, but it was, it was over and done with so quick. You know, we've got to... You know, just look where we've come from and it's, you know, yeah, we've been on such an uptrend for so long and we've had no heavy correction. It's just one of the things that makes me think it might happen. Again, I'm not saying it will. We could break to the upside. This could be Bitcoin. Again, just, you know, coiling up, coiling up and boom, you know, we start making our way towards 50,000. I don't know. But when we go back over here, Bitcoin's been ranging, not doing too much. Everyone's chucked the money into the altcoins and, you know, they've been going crazy and now we've just seen a bit of a cooling off. Now, it's not to say nothing's still pumping. Let's have a look. I'm sure there's things that have still pumped pretty well there. As we can see, there's still coins that are pumping pretty well. So it's not that I am, you know, convinced that we're going to have a correction. I'm just somewhat, you know, it's always in the back of my mind. What if? Now, let's go over here and look, really... The lows aren't too low, and of course, everything corrects at some stage. They don't continue to go up. But again, this is what makes me worried a little bit. We've been coiling, and we've had such a big run without any big corrections, except for this one. It kind of lasted three days, and it was about 28%. So Bitcoin is, you know, it's not playing by the rules that it once, uh, you know, kind of followed uh, in the previous cycles. There was a number of, you know, sort of 40, even up to 80% corrections. So that's just what's in the back of my mind. But also, we go over here. Bitcoin and altcoins correct after Yellen's, Yellen's illicit financing uh, critique. So again, this is a bit of FUD, and you'd be surprised how much FUD can affect the market sometimes. Uh, and for no other reason than that, all of a sudden, you know, the new uh, incoming chairman of the SEC, uh, you know, puts out a tweet like that, and everyone gets a bit bearish on crypto. Now, there's been a lot of money made in crypto lately, so that might be enough for people to say, this is the time. I'm taking, you know, my profits at least, not getting out completely, just I'm taking some profits uh, and I'm going to wait and see what happens. And likewise, there's another one over here. So, um, is that the one? No, here it is. So, big money investors bet on Bitcoin and Tesla bubbles to pop. Now, look, 100% they're going to. Nothing can go up. Uh, constantly, there's always going to be heavy retracements. And we see down here, it says, most money managers surveyed by Deutsche Bank uh, believe Bitcoin's price is more likely to drop 50% than double within the next 12 months. Now, I do agree, agree with some of that. I think we are more likely to drop 50% uh, in the nearer future than we are to double in the nearer future. I think it's going to take us a while to double from here. You know, basically, let's round it up to 40,000. It's going to take us a while to get to 80,000. And I do think that, you know, whether it's a 50% drop, I think there will be a bigger correction coming before we, you know, kind of skyrocket to those prices. But look, I've been thinking that for a while as well. So, you know, and it's proven me wrong. 
So far, this market is different to the other times, but at some stage, it's probably going to slow down and become more like it has been in uh, previous times. So we'll just have to wait and see. You know, I would, you know, I suppose that's that's hard to say. I definitely want Bitcoin to go up, and I'd love for it to go to two hundred and three hundred thousand. I don't want it to do that by you know the end of the week, <laughs> because that just means it's going to dump super hard. It needs to have hefty, you know, uh, healthy. Sorry, not hefty healthy uh, corrections and lull periods and we've had that for about a week now but maybe we need to see a bit more for the health of the overall market in the long term so again that's another thing that makes me think uh, we might you know again just come back some so if we go to the bitcoin chart look i wouldn't be surprised if we sort of came down to you know you know again around that kind of thirty thousand dollar mark uh, that wouldn't surprise me, and I don't expect it to just dump and come straight down, but maybe we just keep sort of traveling sideways. And again, maybe we even do sort of come down and test, you know, around sort of about here, the $27,000 mark. And completely possible that we come down and test the, you know, where is it, sorry, $24,000 mark around here. Possibly even lower, although I don't think that. But Again, we'll just have to wait and see, but I am somewhat concerned. It's just, you know, in the back of my mind that maybe it's time for a bit of a bigger correction. And again, it doesn't have to be that it just dumps full all the way down here, but this pattern just keeps playing out. So basically, what happens if we just see something like this? And again, this is how we end up back down here, somewhere around the $27,000 mark. And it plays out over you know, another month or so. This would be healthy for the market, not something where it dumps and comes all the way down here. Although, you know, if it didn't go below the 200 day moving average, that would still be healthy. It had hurt a whole lot. But I just think something like this wouldn't be too bad. And again, the altcoins would sell off pretty quickly too and things like that. So that's what I'm looking out for. Now, something interesting I found here. So Ripple pins hopes on Biden administration as co-founder sells 28.6 million XRP. Now, Jeb McCaleb, has been selling a ton of XRP ever since he left XRP. And he sold, I think it said in here, $1.2 billion worth of uh, XRP that uh, worked out to be about 400 million US dollars last year in 2020. Uh, and he'll likely continue to sell more. Uh, but considering the new uh, chairman of the comptroller, uh, Gary, oh God, what's his name? Gary Gensler, that's it, uh, has not said favorable things about XRP. He doesn't have an issue with Ripple so much. Well, I suppose that's not true. But he believes Ripple were selling a, a, a security uh, in XRP and that XRP is a security. That's what he said previously. And you can find that stuff uh, on YouTube. That makes me think they're not going to be too favorable for XRP. But look, who knows? Maybe they do a complete black... Compi la, 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 la. <laughs> Seriously struggling. A complete backflip. Uh, and again, XRP suddenly is not a security and then it goes to a million dollars when everyone was, you know, counting it out. That's, you know, not unheard of. Although, uh, for me, I just can't take the risk. You know, the other coins have been, too, been doing too well for too long uh, to stay in Ripple until I get word one way or the other. Uh, and then again, if, if it is declared a security, I don't know if I want to get into it. I'll probably just wait for the Flare token. That'll be uh, sort of probably the thing that will uh, do better if Ripple gets declared a security. But again, maybe I'm completely wrong. Who knows? Right, Grayscale. They know they now own three percent uh, of all of Bitcoin uh, and still growing. Look, just the other day I saw something—a tweet that they bought another, I don't know, eight thousand or something uh, Bitcoin. So they're continuing to buy. So anyone who's thinking, "Oh, thirty thousand is you know uh, way too expensive," look in the short term it could be. Like I said, it, well, I wouldn't be surprised if we had a correction. But long term, I still think Bitcoin goes to 100,000 uh, and above in this bull cycle. How much higher over 100,000? I, I really have no idea. You know, there's people out there saying anywhere up to 400,000, some big banks saying that. But look, we need to remember the banks have just bought Bitcoin now and are, and are buying into it at 30,000. So they want a 10x. So what's a 10x from sort of 30, 40,000? 400,000. So that's why they say things like that. They want everyone to get excited and to buy in 
at a higher price than what they bought in. So be careful of you know when people you know say those kind of things. I think four hundred thousand within ten years is quite doable. Four hundred thousand this cycle. Who knows? I mean, look, if it does go to 400,000, then hallelujah. You know, congratulations to everyone and anyone who's uh, in Bitcoin uh, from now uh, onwards. You'll be absolutely cheering. But, you know, Grayscale buying it at 30,000 uh, tells you something. They still have massive interest in it. And they bought up 18 times more Bitcoin that was, than was mined in one day last week, or it might have even been early this week. So they're still super bullish. Right, Engine Coin. So less than two years ago, after entering the Japanese market, EngineCoin has received approval from the country's JVCEA to be listed on the cryptocurrency exchange CoinCheck. Thus, the asset has become the first gaming token authorized for usage in the Asian nation. So, you know, I've, I like what Engine is doing. Uh, I invested in them a while ago and the coin just did nothing for so long and I was so close to... You know, just selling it because it was underperforming. It was down, you know, 30% to 20% a lot of the time. Uh, and it's finally started to make some moves. So, you know, nothing uh, too crazy. It's still one of my, you know, least performing coins, but at least it's no longer in the red uh, and is doing a lot better than what it was. And look, also that, you know, gaming, I do believe, is going to be massive. Uh, Engine coin is now in there. Uh, so congratulations uh, to the engine uh, you know project uh, and everyone developing on it and all the rest of it and to all the holders you know if if they were much like me where uh, it just wasn't doing anything for a really long time and now it finally has uh, ninety percent uh, that's pretty good not too bad at all right where is it oh Brooksy mate I'm devastated that you are no longer part of the OCC. Yet. I think he was one of the best things to happen to cryptocurrencies possibly ever. Other than Satoshi Nakamoto um, himself, herself, themselves, whoever uh, that may have been. Uh, Vitalik Buterin uh, and maybe Anthony, Anthony Pompliano uh, and, you know, a couple of other big people. You know, Ivan on tech. Uh, he's done a lot for the crypto uh, space and Data Dash and look all the other YouTube as well. But I think he has done so much in the uh, traditional space of finance, uh, and I am devastated that he's gone. And look, it's a couple of things down here on that he's basically said, and it just makes me think we're going to miss him dearly. And I'd love to know where he's going. I hope he's going to stay uh, involved in cryptocurrencies, and I'm sure he will. To be honest. All right. On Tuesday, Brooks tweeted. I'm incredibly optimistic that our big, brawling, risk-taking, dynamic country will continue to lead and succeed, but not by protecting powerful incumbents, i.e. the old banks, the old traditional financial system who've done no innovation uh, and have just made themselves rich and done nothing else. Success will come from disruptive ideas that are scary today, but expected and even necessary tomorrow. God love you, Brooksy. It is such bad news that he is no longer in the OCC. He had, you know, he had only a sort of a few months there, maybe a year there, and you know the things he did uh, for cryptocurrencies. I think he will want to be. He will go down as one of the most important people to uh, crypto going mainstream. Uh, and you know, again, the amount of work that he did in such a short space on. I'm truly devastated that he's not here. Now we go down further, and there was a quote here. I don't think it was from him, but I think this this is a great way to think uh, about cryptocurrencies, and DeFi in particular. DeFi is necessary so that people aren't beholden to banks that may impose spending limits or void purchases at objectionable but legal businesses. Because that's what it is. Uh, I mean, I brought the story the other day about a guy who runs a cryptocurrency exchange in Australia. Completely legitimate. It's not illegal or anything like that, but there's a couple of big banks in Australia that wouldn't let him bank with them. He needs to have a bank so he can, you know, pay his taxes and all the rest of it. And it was the ANZ and Westpac, Westpac Bank that wouldn't let him bank with him. That's ridiculous. He's a legit owner, like, you know, regulated and all the rest of it. He's not some lunatic he owns a, a good exchange or 
at least I think it's a good exchange, but a legal one anyway. And they were like, no, you can't use your money here. That is absolute garbage. Banks, short of someone doing something illegal, should never be able to, to knock you back from uh, banking with them. Banks, you know, they work uh, basically for the public, really. They take our money because we've got nowhere else to put it, really. We can't put it under the bed and that. We're almost forced to put money in banks. Uh, and then they want to put all these rules and regulations on us that haven't been imposed by the governments. They're their own specific ones. That's really cheeky. Uh, and again, so you take that with what Brooksy said here. You know, this we need to move away from the old system. Success will come from disruptive ideas that are scary today, but expected and even necessary tomorrow. And that is DeFi. Then we come down here and it says DeFi is necessary so that people aren't stuck to these old banking systems that lie in their own pockets, have for a long time, and have done very little uh, to provide back to the people that have made them uh, mega rich. It's that old walled garden banking system that needs to be, I can't say completely got rid of because we still need banks, but they are going to need DeFi. Uh, and, and that's what will happen. Look, most people will uh, be exposed to DeFi through their banks and the banks will probably do exactly what they've always done. Uh, you know, charge the backside out of people who don't know better and can't use computers. But I think most of the generational uh, people that are coming through now, they will be able to use computers and they will probably just start to skip banks uh, completely and they'll be able to just use the smart uh, contracts. But in the near, in the more near future, uh, they will have to go to DeFi. They won't have a choice. Now, last but not least. All right, former Canadian Prime Minister mentions Bitcoin alongside gold as alternative reserve currencies. I uh, completely agree. I think this is the smart uh, way to go. Now, this is the former Canadian Prime Minister, so he's not the Prime Minister anymore, so still an important person and may have a bit of clout with you know people around the world. Uh, he's not the Prime Minister, so he doesn't have that legal kind of clout anymore. But I like what was written here. So former Canadian Prime Minister Stephen Harper has mentioned Bitcoin alongside gold as assets that can possibly act as alternative reserve currencies. However, the former Premier still argues uh, that despite the growing questions about the dollar's reserve status, he does not say, see any real prospect of that changing anytime soon. I completely agree. The dollar's not going anywhere. Uh, it may change from the US dollar to the euro dollar, but it's still the dollar. It's the same system. Instead, he envisions these alternatives being becoming part of a basket of reserves in which the dollar still dominates. Uh, I think that is exactly what will happen. I don't think Bitcoin is going to be used as a reserve currency, unfortunately, although I think that would be pretty smart. It would then, f not so much force, but it means governments would start to use it and it would be much more widely adopted. Uh, the price would obviously skyrocket, but then it would stabilise and the whole volatility thing that they talk about uh, would be you know, an, a mute point. But I do believe that's the way it's going to go. I think, you know, uh, yeah, there'll be a bunch of different dollars. So likely the US dollar, uh, the euro dollar. And then I guess you'd have to go back and find out whatever the other, you know, biggest kind of, you know, currencies are around the world. And they'll probably take the top five or something like that. Gold will be in there, maybe silver, uh, maybe oil and things like that. Uh, Bitcoin should be in there, although I don't think it will be in there. I'd uh, love to know your thoughts, you know, wh how do you think the new world reserve currency uh, is going to form? Is it going to be, like I said the other day, they're talking about, you know, maybe it becomes just the euro, uh, but it has the same problems uh, as the, you know, as the dollar that we have, uh, the US dollar, it'll be printed into an oblivion, or do you think that they're going to come up with something like this? And again, it'll be a basket of a whole different, a whole, you know, various kind of things that will help to make uh, you know, the world stabilized in the finances. Love to know your thoughts down below. All right, if you've watched my video, I'd just like to say, or my vlog is what I should call it, I'd like to thank you very much for that. If you could do me a favor, go down, uh, click on that uh, the like button, click on the bell button, uh, subscribe to my channel if you haven't, and then also hit all. I'm really trying to get my videos out there, my vlogs out there, sorry, I'm still a little bit old school calling them videos, they're vlogs. Uh, and I really do need your help and I appreciate your help and any comments you put down below I'll definitely try to get back to you, but be careful. There's a lot of scam comments in there Anyone asking to you know call this whatsapp uh, number or something like that 
they're scams. They are 100% scams. Uh, you will lose all your money if you contact them and then send them anything. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hopefully you're all on that game train. Watch out. A correction could be coming, but maybe we just keep mooning harder. Who knows? And I'll see you next time.